Okie doke, friends. So welcome to chapter four of Venema's Foundations of Geometry. In this chapter, we get to deal with some of the consequences of the last chapter. We're still dealing in neutral geometry, which means we still don't give a rip about the Euclidean parallel postulate or the hyperbolic parallel postulate or any parallel postulate. We're just looking to build things in the neutral geometry using the six axioms that have been laying out for us. On today's show, exterior angles, interior angles of a triangle and how they all interplay. So let's remind ourselves of what we mean by exterior and interior and all like that. So if you have a triangle, maybe it's triangle ABC, uh, this is an interior angle, this is an interior angle, this is an interior angle, they are inside the triangle. If we extend ray BC through C, you get an exterior angle. Now, mind you, you could extend ray AC and get an exterior angle that way, but the way we do it on this slide is to extend this way. I mean, clearly, this is also an exterior angle. It is congruent to the other exterior angle. So when we talk about the measure of an exterior angle, we mean the measure of either of those angles that are formed by extending a ray through a vertex so that these two angles form a linear pair. If we do that, if we get the linear pair and the exterior angle on the outside there, what it means is that these other two interior angles are what we call remote interior angles. Interior because they're inside the triangle, remote because they are far away from the exterior angle of interest. So there's a theorem that relates those angle measures, and it goes something like this. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is strictly greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Now, I don't know how good your high school geometry was. In my high school geometry course, I learned that if you add these two measures, you get that one. And that works in Euclidean geometry, but it doesn't hold in neutral geometry. You need the Euclidean parallel postulate to get that to work. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, to prove the neutral theorem, and the neutral theorem says that the exterior angle is strictly greater than either remote interior angle. So, here's how we do this. Uh, we're going to build a triangle. Oh, wow, what is that? Okay, here we go. We're going to try this like this. This is going to be A, B, C. Uh, ray B, C has been extended to point D. So A, B, C is a triangle. D is a point such that C, D is opposite C, B. Then what I want to show, I want the measure of angle D, C, A to be strictly greater than the measure of angle B, A, C. And... I want the measure of angle DCA to be strictly greater than the measure of angle ABC. That's, that's what I want. So first things first. Let's go after the first thing first, and then we'll go after the second thing second. Here's what we're going to do. We know that C is between B and D because we have extended ray BC to get to point D. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to construct E. E is the midpoint of AC. We know from previous work there is only one such point. And we're going to extend ray BE just far enough so that F, uh, we're going to extend ray BE to point F such that not only is AE congruent to EC, that's because of midpoint, 
but BE is congruent to EF, that's by construction, and we know that such a point has to exist because of the ruler postulate. So that being the case, I know that those two angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. And so look what we have here. We have two triangles that are congruent. We know that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CEF by side angle side. That's what we know. And if and specifically if we know that, we know that angle EAB is congruent to angle ECF. We know that this angle is congruent to that one because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now we hit the pause button and we think, wait a second, I've got to connect the exterior angle to an interior angle and there's an easy way for us to do that. Please notice, F and D are on the same side of line AC. Please say that makes sense. Uh, D has to be on an opposite side from A that B is, uh, because C is in between B and D, and F has to be on the opposite side of AC from B, because we extended BE to get F. So F and D are on the same side of AC. Similarly, F and A are on the same side of BD. There's a similar argument that runs there. A and E have to be on the same side of BD. E and F have to be on the same side of BD. And therefore, A and F have to be on the same side of BD. Well, now, that's important because if those two things are true, then F is in the interior of that angle right there. F is in the interior. And if F is in the interior, then the measure of angle DCA, the big one, has to be bigger than the measure of angle FCA. But wait a second. The measure of angle FCA is the same as the measure of angle BAC. So the measure of angle DCA must be greater than the measure of angle BAC as needed. A similar argument is used to get the other inequality. I will let you figure that out. It's a similar argument. You just extend ray AC instead of ray BC, and the whole thing goes. We proved that using only neutral geometry, which means that this is true whether the Euclidean parallel postulate holds or the hyperbolic parallel postulate holds. Uh, Venema, in his book, describes how this fails on a sphere, and that's really worth reading. Um, Spherical geometry is a lot of fun, but it is not neutral. It is not neutral geometry. Neutral fails. Okay. So, big, big theorem. Should we hit it? Yes, we should. Big, big theorem. For every line L and every point P, there exists a unique line M such that P is on M and M is perpendicular to L. This is something that we've almost taken from taken for granted in high school geometry. We take it for granted that if you have some line L and some point P, you can quote unquote drop a perpendicular to line L. We just sort of figure, well, of course you can. But none of our axioms lead us to that. There's nothing in our neutral geometry so far that leads us to that. So we kind of have to build it. And we build it in the following way. First things first. If the point is on the line, we've done this already. If P is on the line, we have done this. We've used the protractor postulate to say, stick a ray up 90 degrees this way, uh, continue the ray so it becomes a line, 
and, and we get it that way. We've done this several times in our proofs. So we're going to pretend that P is not on the line. And we're going to pick Q and Q prime, and they are on L. There's Q, there's Q prime, they are on L. We can pick two points on the line, that's the ruler postulate. Nice job. And we're going to construct Q prime, Q P, this angle. This angle lives in one of the half planes. And that angle has a measurement. Who cares what it is? It has a measure measurement. Protractor postulate says I can go into the other half plane and I can construct an angle with the same measurement. Fair enough. And the ruler postulate says I can pick a point on this ray such that, let's call that point P prime, such that QP and QP, QP prime are congruent. So the protractor postulate says whatever the measure is for this angle up here, maybe it's alpha, I can make another angle in that half plane, call it alpha, and that's by virtue of the protractor postulate. And then I use the ruler postulate to say, wait a second, let's go out just far enough on that ray so that QP prime is the same as QP. Well, I think you know what we're going to do at this point. We're going to connect the dots. This side is congruent to itself. We're going to call this point F because it, that has meaning. F is the foot of the perpendicular. And so now what? Triangle PQF is congruent to triangle P prime QF. That's my argument. Triangle PQF is congruent to triangle P prime QF by side angle side. And once I have that, I have that this angle is congruent to this angle. So I have two angles that are congruent and form a linear pair. Guess what kind of angles they are? They are right angles. So angle QFP and angle QFP prime are right angles. I have perpendicular lines. Yay! So here's the question. Is that line unique? It's a really good question. Is that line unique? So let's pretend, just for the purposes of argument, let's pretend that there is another line. Call it M. Like so. And it goes through P, and it's perpendicular. I know that those are perpendicular. I assume that these are perpendicular. Well, look what happened in this fancy schmancy green triangle. That red angle is an exterior angle to the fancy schmancy green triangle. And oh, look, that's a right angle. Well, I have a theorem over here that says that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is strictly greater than either of the remote interior angles. Well, this seems like bad. And since that's a contradiction to our neutral geometry theorems, guess what? The perpendicular is unique. So from this point on, if you give me a line and a point that's not on that line, I can talk about dropping a perpendicular, and we know that that perpendicular is unique. Okay, so that's all we have to say about exterior angles. Triangle congruence is up next. There you go. Thanks for watching.